In this video, I'm going to be going over my tier list for improving in top lane, starting with the S tier and going to the D tier champs. I'll be using the seven different criteria showing on the screen, and I'll go into more detail for each as I go along through the tier list. This one should be pretty obvious. It's going to be Garen. He has everything I could possibly be looking for when it comes to improving a top lane, especially in lower elos. Very simple mechanically. His ultimate is very obvious on how he's going to get a kill with it. You just get them into low HP. His reasons to trade are very clear because he doesn't have to worry about mana. It's just, are his abilities up? Nope. Okay, no trade. Is his W up? Yeah, you probably want to trade. He's got fantastic mid to late game scaling and low elo games are always going to go on long. So you get to practice that as well as you're not super reliant on having to 1v9 the game. If it's a tough lane, you can still play it slow, play it calm, still get advantages that way as well. Not to say you don't want to get leads on Garen. Of course you want to get leads in lane, but you want to try to get that without having a super strong early game champion, get it more from playing better, and then we'll start that scaling later anyway. He has plenty of ways to deal with tough lanes as well. He's got the sustain in his passive, plus his W to deal with any kind of massive burst. He loves to play at really high CS amounts because he scales really hard with his items. He's also fantastic at setting up picks because if anyone face checks a brush, he can just instantly 100 to zero them, no problem. Going on to the next champion, we've got Mordekaiser. Similar to Garen, he's very simple, although he does have skill shots. Skill shots are fairly wide though, so they're not too bad. Reasons to trade, pretty clear, just his abilities are up because he doesn't have mana to worry about either. And ideally he has his W built up. Got plenty of ways to deal with tough matchups because of his W. His late game isn't the greatest, but if the enemy jungler hasn't built QSS, he can still have plenty of value with trying to get soul. He's also really good at setting up picks because of his E, especially if his teammates are nearby, he just pulls them right in and then it's that one shot that he's looking for. Malphite is a champion that initially I had an S, but I actually changed my mind on Malphite because I realized he doesn't do that well from high economy, which is pretty important to me for improving at the game. Um, in my opinion, you should be incentivized to get a lot of gold on your character and then use that to continually build a bigger and bigger lead. Now, yes, of course, with any champion, eventually you want to spread the lead to your teammates, but with Malphite, you're very decentivized from getting a whole lot of farm. A lot of time, you'll get more value from just running into a team fight, dropping a wave, and then winning the team fight. But I don't think that's great for improving at the game. I think it's much better if you use some of the other champions on the list, like Garen and Mordecai. But everything else about Malphite is fantastic. That's why I still have him at the left of A tier. Set, very similar to Mordekaiser, but with Set, his reasons to trade are a little bit less clear. And he's also a little bit harder to execute because a lot of the time players are gonna try to use his W to one shot instead of using his Q properly to reset with his passive. And also he doesn't benefit as well from high economy. Dr. Mundo, very, very simple mechanically. Love that, but the problem is his ultimate lethal isn't super obvious, especially to lower elo players. They'll just use it to heal when they're low HP and they won't ever use it for the AD steroid and chasing people down. So that is the problem I have with it. It's not as clear as something like a Mordekaiser ult where he uses it at the start of the fight and kills them from 100 to 0. Darius got a couple problems with him. Mechanically, he's a lot harder than the other champions so far on the list, and he also doesn't scale very well. Now, yes, he can have his moments late game where he gets an ult chain, but majority of the time he's He's not going to have super great scaling. As I said, the main thing is just mechanical difficulty. It takes a lot of practice to be able to space well on Darius. I just think it would be better to try to learn Darius later on in the journey instead of earlier on, but instead you could be focusing on the other champion prior. B tier, we got Nasus. Problem I have with Nasus is that a lot of people just have a tendency to over farm on him. I think the champion's fantastic and he meets my criteria, except for the part about having a simple lethal with ultimate. That part, he has a little bit of an issue because it's, it's kind of like Mundo in the sense that he does get damaged, but a lot of players don't realize it. However, everything else is fantastic. It's just, as I said, the tendency that players have to over farm with him is the reason I have him in B tier. Volley Bear. Very simple, the ultimate execution, love that. Fair reasons to trade, got that as well. He's got his passive up. Problem is he doesn't have super great scaling and it's also very, very hard to freeze on Volley Bear. So that's one of the, I don't like Volley Bear as a recommendation, but overall he's not terrible. Shogath, he's got skill shots that are fairly slow. Well, at least the Q is slow, the W isn't. Um, his ultimate very clearly wants to use it, even gets an indicator, so that's great. Problem is, however, he doesn't benefit as well from high economy as some of the other champions. Shogath. The main issue I have with him is just mechanically he's harder than some of the other champions on this list, and he doesn't benefit as well from having a 
auto farm. The Q can be pretty tough to land for new players on Cho'Gath, and even if you have three items, four items, you're ahead of your opponent, I would still rather you have that gold advantage on something else like Seth. Jax. A couple issues with him that are keeping him in B tier. Mechanically, he's fairly difficult. Now, a lot of people think he's very simple. If you think Jax is very simple, then you're probably not very good at Jax. He takes a lot of practice with his spacing. He's much more complicated than he appears. And the other issue is that in tough lanes, it is very tough for Jax because he does not have any sustain in his kit. His ultimate lethal range is also not very clear for a lot of beginners. So for those reasons, that's why I'm keeping him in B tier. But overall, not bad. Renekton. The problem with Renekton is he has Fury that he has to worry about, so that makes things more complicated. Mechanically, he's not super difficult, but still harder than some others on the list. The reasons to trade aren't super simple because of the previously mentioned Fury, and his scaling is absolutely terrible. A lot of players mess up his ultimate lethal for the same reason that they mess up the Nasus lethal. Aatrox, mechanics is the primary issue, same as Renekton, ultimate is not super obvious on when to use it. Scaling is pretty bad. So the reason for Aatrox is very similar to Renekton. It's just a little bit more complicated. Hail. I generally don't like beginners playing range champions top lane. I think it's a bad way to start with learning top lane. If you're going to do that, I'd rather you be playing mid lane. She does have very, very good scaling, which is the only reason I'm keeping her in C tier. But the problem is her scaling is too much. Because at that point, a lot of players don't even try to get a lead early. They're just completely forfeited and always just try to play for a level 16 ultimate spike. I'd much rather somebody focus more on making sure their mid game, like level 6 to 11, is super, super strong. than overcompensating to the point where they're just giving up tons and tons of CS when they don't even have to if they were to learn how to lane properly. She's also very poor for setting up picks on her own. She needs a lot of help from her teammates in order to do that because she doesn't have... Hard crowd control. Trindamir, pretty difficult mechanically. His ultimate, oh my goodness, his ultimate. So many people mess it up, myself included, every time I play Trindamir. It is what it is. You try to greed, you die, it happens. One good thing is his reasons to trade are very clear. Build up your fury and then you go in. Got great scaling. He's got some great scaling, but it's conditional. If Trindamir does not have a lead, he doesn't really scale that well. He does have his Q to help sustain tough lanes, so that is good. He loves to be high economy, that's great, but setting up picks on his own. It's not there really because same reason as Kale, he doesn't have that hard CC needed, but he does have the ability to run people down. Similarly to Nasus, Trinimir has the problem of players that play him over push or over farm to the point where even if there is a good team fight for them to rotate to, they just refuse to and they keep hitting turret. So it causes a lot of bad habits. Olaf, his game plan for trading, fairly simple. Execution, not so much. A lot of players will throw a full range axe instead of a shorter range so that pick it up earlier. The use of his ultimate isn't always super clear. His scaling is terrible unless he has a very good comp for him. It can be very difficult to recover from tough lanes if he managed to screw up because yes he does have lifesteal but it's pretty conditional because he has to be on the minion so if he's getting poked it's tough. He can't really farm from, farm from far away because his Q is going to cost him a lot of mana. But his ability to set up picks is pretty good because he can just absolutely run people down with his Q slow. Lowy. Not too bad mechanically. She is skill shot reliant, but overall not the worst. Her ultimate can be fairly straightforward to use. Just whenever people engage, you use it. Her mid to late game scaling is definitely nothing to look over. There's plenty of ways to deal with tough lanes because she does have all different kinds of ranged ability to use to farm if she needs to, as well as using her tentacles. She benefits well from high economy, so that's great. However, she's lacking in the ability to set up picks on her own. And what a lot of players end up doing is they won't pay attention to where the tentacles are because that does add some complexity to the champion, as well as they will forego warding just because they think, oh, I'm a Lao and then I'm dying to ganks because you're not completely invulnerable just because you're Lao with ultimate. You still have to respect the jungler to a degree. On Mechanically, he's not too bad as long as you're focused on using short range Q. However, his ultimate is where most of the complexity comes from, and he's also very, very early game focused. 
sure he has some end game elements as well with his ult, but late game value is gone. A lot of people when they play Pantheon, they ult too early, they ult too late, and so they end up getting very low value. Overall, I don't think you should be focusing on roaming when you're trying to improve the game. You first should be focusing your lane and then work on that later on. Bundle, very easy mechanically. That's the only reason that I'm keeping him in D tier. His ultimate, fairly straightforward as well. But the problem is his scaling isn't too great. He doesn't have any ranged abilities to be able to farm in tough matchups. And his ability to set up picks while being okay isn't ideal. Because a lot of times the opponent can flash or they can just simply dash over it. Horn, he is not easy mechanically. Definitely harder than most of the champions on this list. His ultimate can be quite confusing on when to use. His reasons to trade aren't the worst because a lot of times you're just trading when your abilities are up because you want to do your combo of Q into E or your W when you have Grasp. But then again, it's a lot more complicated than the SNA tier champ. He doesn't have any sustain in his kits. However, his ability to buy items while still in lane does help a little bit. But he doesn't benefit super well from high economy, which again, I find very important when improving in a lane. He's got a really good ability to set up picks though with the Z, so that part's good. The last champion I have on the list is Yorick. I was hesitant to even have him on the list at all, but I did want to have 20 to really fill out the tier list. Mechanically, he's very easy, but his ultimate is not clear at all on when to use it. He does have fantastic scaling though, so there is that. He has stain, ways to recover from tough lanes with his range from his E schools, so that's good. He likes to have high economy, that's great. And he can even set up picks with his W, but as I said, the complexity of his ultimate and champions and players have a tendency to just permanently split push even when it may not be the correct play or they're split pushing at the wrong time and it's a nightmare. That's why I have him in the very far right of D tier. As I said, that was the entire tier list. The rest of the champions showing below, I did not put on the tier list for reasons like mentioned above, either they're too complex or the way that they're gonna use their abilities are just too abnormal or for the champion that just really lacks scaling, like for example, Warwick or Tom Kench, there's just way too much cheese going on there and I don't think it's great for learning the game. One note worthy mention is Scion. Primary reason that I did not put Scion on there is because I don't like the concept of dying to gain benefits. It's going to be very counterintuitive and it produces many, many bad habits if that is your primary champion that you learn and you don't play another champion and then pick up Scion. Of course, if whatever champion you want to play is not on this list, you can still play them. I'm not saying you can't. It's just simply what I recommend if you want to improve as fast as possible.